really understanding what you're good at and what you're not good at is something that I can definitely recommend to, you know, to everybody. Connection, engagement, rigor, success. Hello, and welcome to my podcast, Coaching You Through All Things Education. And you can find me right here on Tuesdays at noon. I'm your host, Anne Lopangana Clay of ANC Unlimited, and we take the stress out of education. I am a passionate educator who has spent the past 26 years teaching, presenting, coaching, and consulting for students of all ages, parents, other educators, and the public. Each week, we will unpack relevant topics in education together. And when I'm not podcasting, stop by our website, acunlimited.org, for our new blog post in Coaching You EDU or a free consultation on any teacher, admin, or parent question of your choosing. We also provide three levels of interview coaching and custom design workshops made just for you. If something resonates with you during this episode, please leave a comment on LinkedIn, on our company Facebook page, or on Twitter. Check out the story notes for our social media details. And if you have an episode suggestion, please send it to coachingallthingsedu at gmail.com. Now let's dive in. Hello, and welcome to episode 13 of Coaching You Through All Things Education podcast. We continue our Edupreneur series with our special guest, businessman, and fellow podcaster, Sean Boyle. Welcome, Sean. And thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. We're going to start with question number one. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and unpack how you help entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs optimize their small businesses? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm I'm from the uh, fighting city of brotherly love. Just graduated college in April from Penn State. Shout out Penn State. And yeah, I own a seven figure. Yeah, right. It's the best. You know, the Big Ten, thank God the Big Ten football is back because I couldn't stand it any longer. I mean, it's it's one of these things. It's like my coffee in the morning. I, I just need it in my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah. So I graduated in, in uh, April or May. I forget at this point. And I actually, with my business partner, command a seven-figure digital marketing agency where our HQ is in Philadelphia, but we have, like I was telling you before the show, over 30 locations in the U.S. Awesome. And Something that we do that really specialize is uh, and optimizes small businesses is these virtual tours, which I kind of want to unpack a little bit more. But for those who aren't familiar, you can simply go to matterport.com or you can go to you know a bunch of other websites. But it's really a great technology because you got to think during the coronavirus, there were so many realtors out there, so many small business owners that were you know lacking. They were closed. So in my mind. We already had the virtual tour model of, you know, we're going to help sell uh, properties with these virtual tours, but restaurants and retail stores started to come to us and say, hey, we can optimize this by putting in our own online menu, right? And this is just another thing. So when people do come back, they can see the space on their laptop or phone, right? And pretty much just book right online. So it's something where whether you're, you know, an event space or you're a restaurant or or anything, really, it's just a a vital thing. And, you know, we live in 2020. So I think, you know, although we wanted to have flying cars by now, it's not like that, like with these virtual tours, that's why uh, I'm just trying to get us there one step at a time. You know what I mean? I do. And you know what? That sounds like a flying car, but I'm excited. (laughs) So I'm excited. Yeah. I totally agree. I mean, it's one of these things where you look at you know the 40s and 50s where radio was just it's the big boom right it was just yes. you know the president now 
we turned it into TV with the 60s, 70s, 80s, and now it's transitioning to the iPhone. So I was like, how are we going to put in this virtual content? Because it obviously syncs to the mobile phone. So it's just the next thing. I mean, I know that Apple released what their iPhone 12 the other day, but, and I got to tell you, it's something where I think that virtual technology is going to get to a point where we can literally just make stuff like you seen the movie Iron Man with Tony Stark, how he's like yes. pressing all these buttons and he's pulling all these gadgets. I, I think we can ultimately get there and it's just going to help us um, communicate better as humans. I think that it's, it's such a beautiful thing that we definitely need um, in many different ways too, because, uh, it's just a beautiful thing for sure. But yeah, we're, we're definitely living in the, uh, the futuristic age. That's for sure. That's amazing. You know, um, the advances that have, have come this far and, and you're utilizing each and every one of them. I love it. All right. We're going to move to question number two. How did you begin your journey to where you are today? So this is such a great question. And I love telling this story because a lot of people, you know, DM me on Instagram and, I'm trying to be a humble person. I'm not the person who I, you know, I still take those steps, uh, step the bus. I still drive my 2006 Ford Taurus. I'm not the type of person where I'm trying to impress people with, you know, money and all these material things. Like I love watches. Like where's my watch? I don't even know where it is, but you know, I love it for the craftsmanship. I don't love it for like, Oh, let me just put it on Instagram and have people's validation. I, I could care less about people's opinions. And my story started when I was in college and I got a phone call from my dad, right? And he actually told me something very ominous and where he said he was actually being indicted by the federal government, right? So I was like, dad, I, I didn't, uh, you know, like well, what's going on? Because he was a financial advisor for Leg Mason, Smith Barney, all of these great, you know, financial institutions. And I never thought, oh, like my dad would be indicted. Like, I don't understand that. Long story short, you've seen, and your audience has seen the Wolf of Wall Street, you know, great movie. My dad pretty much did that on a lesser scale. So with that said, I was just devastated. I was so devastated where, you know, I was depressed. I was, you know, my freshman year of college. I was like, what am I going to do with myself? So selfishly, I took myself and said, okay, I'm going to make the most amount of money. I don't care what I do. I just need to make the most amount of money, support my family. And that's really what I wanted to do. So for the first two years of, of college, and I wanted to be an engineer, right? Okay. What's the most expensive, the, you know, most uh, highest paid salary? It's, it's, you know, biomedical engineer. So yeah. that's the route I wanted to take. And I've got to be honest with you, I'm really not even that good at math. So it's like, why was I trying to, to do that all, all of a sudden? You know what I mean? So when time came to start getting an internship, I was like, you know, this engineering stuff is not going to work out because I know in my heart, I am not an engineer. And if I try to pursue this, I'm just going to you know, fall flat on my face and it's just not going to work out. So I started really taking a step back and thinking, okay, what, what am I good at? What's something that I, I can really make use of a career? You know, taking online tests, talking to friends, talking to family, talking to my dad, because fortunately we have a technology where not only can we talk on the phone, but it's like texting where we can literally have a um, communication platform uh, on the phone. So it's, again, such a beautiful thing. And I came up with being an entrepreneur and I didn't know what I wanted to do or what I wanted to build, but I knew that I wanted to do something in that. So sophomore year, I was talking to my advisor, Irene Hurd, this Russian teacher, just one of the most beautiful people you'll, you'll ever meet in your life. Her heart is just so pure. She's like 85. She's still working just, you know, like the salt of the earth. You know what I mean? So I, I can't say enough good things about her. You know, she was awesome. So I was like, you know, uh, I, Irene, I really want to start this whole digital marketing thing. I think it's really going to take off. I'm like, do you have any internships that you can recommend in Philly? Right. She gives me a stack of papers about two inches thick. I'm like, oh boy, we got to go through these. The first page, and I saw this company called Momentum Digital, and it just stuck out at me, right? Sure. So I Googled the website, and I found this guy, Mac Frederick. And so I started looking at Mac, and I was like, wow, he went to, he worked at Google. He's a Penn Stater himself. Let me hit him up. I hit him up for, this, for the internship the following summer, right? Not, not for the next. I hit him up in the winter for the following, because I knew I was already late, right? So sure. he emailed me back. He's like, Sean, he's like, what are you doing? Like, I, I love you being proactive, but you know, you're like, you're, you're a year earlier, buddy. So we started talking and, and obviously I earned myself the internship and through really just hard work and, and selling, I got to a place where I was at the Capitol Grill. This was last year. And Max told me, he said, listen, man, I want to give you a part of my company. 
and I was floored because yeah. it's something as, you know, a 23 year old, I was always aspiring, to, excuse me, to be that entrepreneur, to be a business owner. So it's like, what does it even mean? And I really found that this whole digital marketing thing he had going on, I could help with that. And in more ways than one in the organization and the selling and just overall presence, I think that we could, you know, me and him are just peanut butter and jelly. We're just power players together. You know, it's, it's perfect. It is perfect. So, <laughs> yeah. So now from, uh, yeah, to, to right now, I mean, it's, um, we're, we're kicking butt and it's just been fantastic, but yeah, that's my story of how I really got to momentum. And it's something where a lot of people are struggling, especially people that just graduated college, just like myself. They're like, what do you want to do? And it's like, you need to ask these questions to yourself because in, in your soul, you, you can figure it out. You know, I really think so, but you need to, you know, go through a little bit of struggle and go through, you know, I, I shouldn't say turmoil, but some sort of, you know, um, some event that's going to move you. And whether that's, you know, taking a career test or, or talking to people and getting that honest truth that I think is so important because it's a baseline, you know, having people tell you, oh, Sean, you're the smartest guy in the room. It's like, you know, which they never told me, by the way. But if they told me that, it's like, why, like, what am I to believe? I could be anything. I could be a pilot. I could be a doctor. So it's like, you know, really understanding what you're good at and what you're not good at is something that I can definitely recommend to, you know, to everybody. Let's take a brief break and we'll be right back with more from Sean Boyle. Now a word from our sponsor. Want to start your own podcast? Start with Anchor FM. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it is absolutely free. They also have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor FM will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple, and many more podcast apps. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. And it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So if you're interested, please download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Because you're listening today, you'll get a sneak peek into our next episode. Our next episode begins our new series on mental health and wellness. We'll see you then. We're back with more from Sean Boyle. Sean, oh my goodness, that is an awesome journey. I got so much out of it. It sounded to me like you had a clear path in engineering and you thought that that path was the one that you wanted to go in, but you changed your mind. I am a huge advocate for students who are considering doing something different. Um, I also believe that if we facilitate and not lecture and not pigeonhole students, even in my own teaching experiences, that students will grow and develop. And it sounds like that mindset is the same one that your professor had and that she guided you on a path for you to develop and to grow and ultimately to become an entrepreneur. I bet she's proud. But anyway, I love I love the fact that you're a go-getter. You you know, you turned in your application early and I do think that that was a huge part in you getting your role that shows a sense of character uh that the that your empl- um your partner now um, saw in you early on and those are exceptional things. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Yeah, for sure. It's a great story. I think people can definitely learn a lot from it, you know? Yes. 
All right. Question number three. So you talked a lot about the, your path on the journey. What are some mistakes that you wish you could have avoided? That's a great question. And I think being, being you know, short-sighted, I think that's something I could definitely recommend because I look at it now where I don't want to play the short game anymore. You know, you got to think when I was in college seeking that, you know, seventy, eighty thousand dollars salary. Oh, my gosh, it's you know so much money. I, I really couldn't care how much money I, I, I make from this company to be transparent. I mean, sure, we need to grow and build and prosper. But I'm more in, in, in uh, my focus on is, is you know, building people and, and you know, really growing and, and giving them exposure and just being, you know, having good clients and, and good products and producing quality results. It's really what I'm all about. And just, you know, leaving that legacy. So something that I can definitely say is all these people, especially my generation, they want to have this instant gratification, right? You've definitely seen it. Um, and, and, you know, so is everyone really where it's, they expect everything overnight. And for me, I, I was once that person, I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm working so hard. You know, where's my six figures. And it's like, you know, you just started work like three months ago. Like you, you need to relax. So, in my mind, you got to play the long game. And for me, I want to play that till I'm 90. You know, truly, like I'm 23. So what's that? Like, so that's so many years. It's like 67 years. So it's like I really want to play that that long game where I'm just impacting people on a on a global basis. Where, sure, the monetary thing is whatever. If it comes, great. If it doesn't, I I, I could care less. It's really just about leaving that impression of you know again, kindness and just quality results. And for me, Absolutely. you know, my legacy is going to be predicate, predicated on, you know, being kind and, and just a you know loyal person and, and always being there, you know, for my clients and, and just growing and, and having that secret sauce and, and really building people up with their self-esteem because I was one person, <clears throat> excuse me, who I didn't have you know the best self-esteem. I mean, hopping on a podcast when I was like, you know, 15 or 16, that would have seemed foreign to me. I wanted to just crawl in my room and, and just lock the door and just go to sleep. Like I, I was the most introverted kid in the world, but, um, and if you're introverted out there, you know, Merry Christmas, like you could, you know, do that too. That's, that's not a bad thing at all. But I think knowing yourself and experiencing that full potential, uh, is so powerful. So you got to play that long game, whether you're an engineer, you're a teacher, you gotta, you gotta be that long, uh, long player for sure. And that's going to get you, get you more happiness as well. You know? Absolutely. Thank you. Our question number four, can you give us three tips for our listeners about how to optimize their business? Yeah, for sure. So this is something I was actually talking about with my uh, one friend, Josh Tapp, the other day on the uh, Lucky Titan. And I'll, I'll kind of reiterate it here where, you know, and this is more technical, this is more micro, which I think your audience would definitely love to hear. So number one is, you know, whatever, whether you're a teacher, consultant, whatever, you got to get a Google My Business. Google My Business, for those who don't know, it's kind of like Google's social media profile where, you know, me, I get about 70 to 80% of my business just from GMB, right? So when people Google virtual tours in Philadelphia and Boston, my uh, profile pops up. And that is really a mix of content, on-page SEO, you know, just a, a boatload of you know, blogs and YouTube channels and obviously like social profiles and, and social bookmarking um, go into that too. And for many people, this isn't necessarily a foreign concept, uh, the Google My Business. But again, for the people who aren't out there that are not up to date as, as us, the GMB is, is number one, if, if you're not doing it right now, for sure. Um, number two is you got to expand, whether that's, you know, your uh, retail store or your, you know, because I know people who they, you know, and they, um, they're, they're e-commerce. So it's like, we can't really expand. What do we want to do? Sure. You can, you can hop on different products, different things. It's all about scaling and scaling in a way that, you know, you're going to be able to handle that business as much as I'd love to. Like I was talking to my one mentor, uh, Ira Rosen, who runs this amazing, like nine figure digital marketing company. And he's actually, you know, he's like, Sean, something that I, I tell all my clients and, and something that I kind of thought of uh, myself too, is you got to have different products. You got to have different services. And, you know, with that, one product might get you to seven figures, but it's going to be pretty hard to get you to eight and nine and, you know, ultimately reach, um, 
you know, the billion. So it's, it's something that you got to have different options and you need to be open-minded too, as an entrepreneur to, to really look at the market and have a, not so much a crystal ball because no one has that, but just kind of like predict what you think. And if you're a little bit off, that, that's still good. That's better than most people for sure. Um, and the third thing is always mindset. You know, like I wake up like five 30, I go to bed, you know, pretty not, not super late. I I'm, I'm human, but you know, it's one of these things where I can't wait to get to work. I can't wait to start my day. And, and, you know, like it's, 7 30 in philly right now and it's one of these things where i'm going to go up and just start hopping on client calls and, and you know talking to my team so what does that start with you know what are some what's the main thing i think that it really means you know having an open mind and that could be because here's my thing as a business owner and as a manager truly i work for my employees they don't work for me sure they do do the work but i work for them in the sense where like a lot of people, and this is like all Gary V talking really, but I predicate my style on, you know, what can I do for you? What, what are some things that I can help you with? Because at the end of the day, you know, this is the team that's going to be, you know, busting their butt for, for me. So it's like, what, what can I do to help you, you know, be more successful in your job? And whether that's, oh, you need to go to this place or take a vacation, whatever. I'm fine with that. You know, whatever. I, the, the worst thing I want to do is put you in a position where not only are you uncomfortable, but you're just not loving what you do. And, you know, that's something I, I want to embrace and grow. And I want to help you and, and sculpt you into the person you've always wanted to become. I don't want to degrade you and, and say your, your work's horrible. I mean, it's something that, you know, as a manager, I've, I, I fortunately have, have learned not to do that through the years. So honestly, that's, that's the three things that I could definitely recommend. GMB, expand when you can and, and mindset, you know? Those are some excellent tips. I think people are writing them down as you're speaking <laughs> so they can go and make sure that everything is in place on their end. I also appreciated you talking about the love of doing your work. And I think that's why, you know, we've been doing this entrepreneur series because entrepreneurs like entrepreneurs enjoy what they do, right? Um, sometimes we get pigeonholed into jobs and I, not one time did I hear you say the word job, and I definitely agree with you. If you love what you're doing, you are going to have these wild hours <laughs> and love doing it. Yeah, and that's okay. Like, I don't, you know, again, I don't consider this work. I really just consider this, it's like as natural as breathing, you know, and some people that might seem like a foreign concept, but to you and I, it's just, it's who we are, you know, it's what we're all about. It fulfills our soul. So Absolutely. yeah, definitely agree with you. Yeah. Well, we have our last question. It is my favorite <laughs> and it's trending on the show. What if you could have your own billboard with anything on it, what would you write on it and why? It's such a, you know, it kind of goes, and this is kind of a cop out, but it goes back to the last answer. I would say do what you love. Truly. I think that there's so many people in this world that are in college or just graduated where they have some kind of pressure from their parents or, from some mentor to think, oh, we need to be making this amount of money or we need to be doing this. And they go in some job where they're just in the rat race. And, and you know, not only are they not going to make any money long term, but they're just not happy. So it really starts from a place of loving what you do and, and knowing yourself. And I think that once you have that figured out, because everyone wants to control out here, right? They want to control the, you know, the, the exterior first and then worry about what you can do externally because you know, if, and again, I'm not saying you need to be perfect in any mean, you know, for me, I had to overcome bullying, anxiety, depression, and all of these things. And again, they still come up. It's, it's very, you know, natural emotions for, I'm more, uh, you know, an anxious person than, than the average person, I'd say, but where, you know, you need to have certain strategies and, and go from there. So you got to do what you love. I really think that starts with that first. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sean. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so many nuggets, so many goodies, so many things for us to think about and takeaways that we can use right away. Like I said, as soon as I get off here, I'm going to check on my Google. <laughs> um, well, thank you so <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope we might have an opportunity to talk with you again in the future. So you have a wonderful day. Oh, it's my, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Oh.
Well, that concludes another episode of Coaching You Through All Things Education podcast. As Confucius states, those who develop the ability to continuously acquire new and better forms of knowledge that they can apply to their work and to their lives will be the movers and shakers in our society for the indefinite future. Again, you can find me on LinkedIn or on our company Facebook page, A and C Unlimited. And please take a moment to visit our website at acunlimited.org for that free consultation. Until next time, stay stress-free and be well.